Welcome to this edition of Back in History. In this edition, we bring to you the history and profile of the Republic of Angola, one of the countries in the African continent. It is the intention of the Back in History channel to make a documentation of all the countries in the African continent as part of its mission to enlighten and showcase to the world the deep historical narratives and vast riches of the continent. Africa has a total of 54 countries and Angola is one of the countries. Angola is located in southwestern Africa. It is bordered by Namibia to the south, Zambia to the east, Democratic Republic of Congo to the, to the northeast, and South Atlantic Ocean to the west. Angola is one of the richest countries in the continent with its vast deposit of oil, gold, diamond, copper, and other mineral resources. Angola has been in existence right from creation. The entity now known as Angola has been occupied by prehistoric people for several years before the advent of civilization. These prehistoric occupants of the land carried on several acts of possession and ownership and also embarked on subsistence agriculture and cattle rearing. These original inhabitants were nomadic Khoi and sand people prior to the first Bantu migrations. Following the Bantu migrations, the Bantus later arrived in Angola and took residence there. With the passage of time, civilization was introduced to Angola. Trade routes were established between the people of Angola and the other parts of Africa and of the world. There were institutions of leadership even at this rudimentary stage of Angola's existence and there was law and order in the society. There were taboos and prohibitions of bad behavior with punishment or sanction for violators. Society went on smoothly. Later on, the Portuguese established contact with the people of Angola and engaged in commerce with the inhabitants. They traded on several commodities and later on they engaged in slave trading. Able-bodied Angolans were purchased like commodities by Portuguese traders and transported by sea to Europe where they were sold as slaves to owners of large farmlands and plantations. In the course of time, Portugal decided to colonize Angola and take full control of the country. This was done and for several years, the mineral resources of the country were harnessed by Portugal and taken to Europe especially during the Industrial Revolution of the 16th century. The colonial administration in turn provided infrastructure and general administration of the country. A time came when the people of Africa made serious agitation for the return of leadership in the continent to indigenous people. They requested an end to colonial governance. The agitation was like strong wind blowing across the whole of Africa with leading nationalists calling for an end to colonialism. The people of Angola also sought an end to colonial governance and made their agitations known to their colonial masters, Portugal. But unlike other countries in Africa, the independence of Angola was not forthcoming despite repeated demands and sustained agitation. Between 1960 and 1965, several countries in Africa had gained independence but for Angola, the story was different. Angolans were prohibited from forming political parties or labor unions. Every activity aimed at securing independence for Angola was prohibited by the colonial administration. During the Second World War, several Africans were recruited to fight at the war front along with Europeans. Native Angolans were equally recruited to fight. While they are at the war front, their worldview and consciousness took a different shape. They fought in the trenches with the Europeans, stayed in the same dungeon with them, trained together, lived together, 
ate together, rejoiced together over events that became victorious, and mourned together over events that became disastrous at the war front. In essence, the aura around the colonial people became demystified. There was nothing special in the colonial people. When the war ended, several Angolan troops returned home. These returnees fearlessly requested for the grant of independence to Angola. They worked with other enlightened Angolans, those who also had the benefit of foreign exposure. They also worked with labor groups, though such groups were illegal at the time. They went into the rural areas and also spoke to the people to awaken their consciousness on the need to support the agitation for self-governance because for them there was no need being colonized by a foreign power. All these steps were fiercely opposed by the Portuguese colonial masters but the people of Angola were undaunted and continued to agitate for the grant of independence to Angola. Portugal's refusal to address the increasing demands of the people of Angola for independence provoked an armed conflict in 1961, which eventually resulted in the War of Independence, which lasted for 12 years with scores of lives lost in the war. In the course of the war, three armed nationalist movements emerged in the country, with each of them fighting for independence of Angola and having its own interest to protect. The armed groups were the National Front for the Liberation of Angola, FNLA, National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, UNITA, UNITA, which was spearheaded by Jonas Savimbi, and thirdly, the Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola, MPLA. These groups had their armed wings, which engaged in battle with the Portuguese forces whenever they need a rose. They also fought among themselves for supremacy. These groups had foreign sponsors such as the United States of America, the Soviet Union, Cuba, China, and many other countries in the West. Indeed, the road to the independence of Angola was a rough road. In the course of time, there was the need for a ceasefire on all sides to allow for the formalization of the independence discussion for Angola. The Organization of African Unity, OAU, played a significant role at this point. It met several engagements with Portugal and advocated the need for Angola to be granted independence. The OAU also brokered a meeting between the leaders of the three dominant militant groups in the country, namely FNLA and MPLA and UNITA. Their leaders were Holden Roberto, Jonas Savimbi and Agostino Neto. A meeting was held with them in Mombasa to discuss the ceasefire in January 1974. At the meeting, they agreed to form a coalition government and work together for the peace and development of the country if independence is granted. Gradually, Portugal began to withdraw from Angola and pave way for independence, and in November 1975, Angola was granted independence to the jubilation of the people of the country and of the continent. Angola thus became one of the few countries in Africa where colonial rule had persisted longer than others. Upon the grant of independence, power was effectively transferred to the people of Angola. The leader of the MPLA, Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola, Agostino Neto, emerged as the first president of Angola. He went on with his administration but did not have it easy. He had several elements to contend with. The other two militant groups were still armed and their leaders were still very powerful and influential 
in their various areas of oppression. Savimbi, for instance, remained a factional leader until his assassination by government forces in February 2002. Angola fought a bitter civil war and has also experienced many domestic challenges and has had to contend with several guerrilla forces which has caused a serious security challenge to the country. Angola, however, remains an independent nation till date and has made remarkable strides in a lot of ways. Angola's economy, for instance, has in recent years moved on from the disarray caused by the many years of war to become one of the fastest growing economies in Africa and one of the fastest growing in the world. The economy depends largely on revenue from oil and also depends on the sale of diamond, gold, copper and other natural resources. Angola remains one of the biggest trade partners to China and for several years China has reciprocated by giving billions of dollars in credit line to Angola. There are projections that the Angolan economy will continue to grow exponentially in the coming years, including the non-oil sector of the economy. The tourism sector has also grown in Angola in the last couple of years, especially following the end of the war. Agriculture and forestry have also recorded huge growth and successes in the country and have also contributed to the GDP of the country. Angola has also made giant strides in the transport sector. It has a functional railway system and well laid out highway for ease of land transport. It has navigable inland waterways, seaport and several airports across the country. It also has a national carrier, the TAAG Angola Airlines. In the telecommunication sector, Angola has also done remarkably well. In October 2014, the building of an optic fiber underwater cable was announced with the aim of improving on the internet services and related services in the country. Angola has mobile penetration of more than 80% of its population. More than 12 languages are spoken in Angola, including the Portuguese language. Portuguese is the official language of the country. Angola is a deeply religious country with the Catholic faith taking about 57% of the population. There are also other Christian religious bodies in the country. Angola also has its Muslim population. Some Angolans engage in traditional worship in exercise of their rights of freedom of worship and religion. In the area of education, Angola has also made remarkable achievements. Several children have been enrolled in schools and education is free and compulsory for the first eight years for every child in the country. Angola is also a country of sports. Its citizens have participated actively in basketball, football and other sports activities up to the international stage. Angola is governed by a president who emerges through a general election. Angola is divided into 18 provinces and further divided into 162 municipalities. The government of Angola is made up of three branches, namely the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. The president works with the vice president and the college of ministers. There is a constitution which outlines the powers of government and the basic human rights of citizens. There is the armed forces and the police and other institutions of government. Angola has been through so much in its history, but the country has also learned so much in its bitter past. Today, Angola is one of the most promising countries in the continent of Africa. If its resources are well harnessed and the issues of corruption duly addressed, Angola can climb the ladder of progress and development to an enviable height. 
Angola remains a beautiful bride in the African continent. And with proper leadership, Angola can surely attain its full potentials to the ultimate benefit of its citizens and partners. Angola remains one of the countries in Africa richly blessed in natural and human resources. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video.